In this video, we're gonna be going over the OWASP top 10. This is a list of the top 10 vulnerabilities that the organization OWASP has identified to be found in web applications today. And this is something to be incredibly and intimately familiar with if you're wanting to get into pen testing or web application hacking or bug bounty hunting. Now, before I start, TryHackMe has a phenomenal room on the OWASP top 10, and we're kind of gonna handrail this so you could say that this is a walkthrough, but it includes some practical exercises that you can use that will really help kind of land this home. But first, we're gonna talk about injection. And this, of course, includes both SQL and command injection. This might be where you have an input field in a web application, and a visitor is able to input a malicious string into that input field. What happens is that that web application doesn't strip that input of any kind of you know malicious characters or sanitize it of those characters or validate it with a list of valid input commands. In Instead, it just takes it and interprets it and runs it as if it is a command. And then it will return the output to the viewer. So in the case of an SQL injection, the attacker is able to input an SQL query into the input field and they will get returned information on the database that is on the back end of that web application. Likewise, in the case of a command injection, an attacker can input a malicious command into the input field and they will get a reply of basically the output of that command. Not fantastic. So that's why this is number one. A proper defense for this would be stripping the input of any kind of dangerous characters or really like referencing it with a list of valid input queries that visitors should be allowed to input. That's what is known as input validation. Next, let's talk about broken authentication. Now, this can be a result of a few factors. It could be a result of brute forcing, weak credentials, or even weak session cookies. This is really where an attacker is able to basically usurp or steal or take, you know, the, the authenticated session of another user, whether that is like through brute forcing a password and gaining entry or stealing the cookie or by being able to deobfuscate elements of a session from another user. It, it might help to defend by creating a lockout counter for a brute forcing attempt. So if you exceed three failed attempts in a specific time, then you, the account will be locked. Another would be for logging out automatically idle sessions after a specific amount of time. And then also, you know, of course, the same things we talk about with pretty much any account ever, right? Strong password policies and multi-factor authentication. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've probably heard password security and multi-factor authentication quite a lot. Well, it's because it's important. Next is sensitive data exposure. Sometimes when you're building a web app, especially if you're wanting to make it super fancy or include quite a lot of information, you might not realize that some information might be a little too public and open to the internet. Those may be open either to get requests where attackers can get information that they're not supposed to have access to or they can even have permissions to post information to those to those different directories and pages. Now to, for this you want to make sure that you are ensuring extensive scanning and exploration of your web application to ensure that all the directories that you don't want public are not public. Next is XML external entity and this might sound a little confusing so let's back up. XML is XML is, is extensible markup language. It's basically used in most web applications to help assist with web requests. Now attack Hackers might be able to input their own XML code to get a specific requests that they're looking for. And that is how they're able to expose sensitive data or gain access to specific data, or even execute code on the back end. To defend against this, I mean, it really ties back to the input validation that we talked about before. You wanna make sure that you are validating and sanitizing the input that visitors uh, are, are inputting to various input fields on your site. Next, let's talk about broken access control. Sometimes users have permissions that they don't need. And this is kind of where, you know, that routine comes in of making sure that users only have a sufficient level of access for the sufficient level of time and no further. Else they're able to access information that they shouldn't have and attackers may be able to exploit that or if the user is, is evil, then they can exploit that. To defend against this, you really have to do that constant process of ensuring that users have their permissions pruned pretty routinely. I mean, almost daily or as soon as like a project's over to make sure that they do not have more access than they need. Next, let's talk about security. Security misconfigurations. This can be a fun one. Sometimes web applications might have just a general misconfiguration in the security settings or in the way that an application is built and attackers are able to exploit that, whether it's a logic flaw or an engineering flaw or what have you, and gain access to sensitive data. To defend against this, really you have to look at the security settings on your web application and make sure that everything is optimized for max security, but then also make sure that you're implementing updates. Next is cross-site scripting and my friend the XSS rat who's 
been on this channel a couple of times. Good friend of the channel. This is his favorite vulnerability. And really this is a whole topic unto itself. And he talks about that so much on his channel. So be sure to go check him out for more technical information that I couldn't hope to provide, at least right now. But there are three different types of XSS that you should be aware of. Stored XSS, reflected SSS, and DOM-based XSS. Cross-site scripting may allow attackers to execute arbitrary code on the back end of this web application. And again, we've talked about this a few times, input validation can really help with mitigating this type of an attack. Next, let's talk about insecure deserialization. And this allows an attacker to replace data that is currently being processed with arbitrary code. Now, this one's kind of hard. This really requires the attacker to have a pretty intimate understanding of the back end of the web app. But if they're able to do this, they can hit anything from APIs to cookies. And this really can be defended against by using really strong encryption. Next, let's talk about components with known vulnerability. This happens if you miss updates or miss any kind of patches or fixes that deal with those logic flaws that we were talking about earlier. Oftentimes a CVE will roll out for one of those vulnerabilities and eventually an exploit. A proof of concept will be released that attackers can use even of low sophistication to exploit this vulnerability. And so that's really where you need to uh, implement updates and patches routinely. Finally, let's Talk about insufficient monitoring and logging. This is another one of those things, kind of like access control, that requires constant vigilance and monitoring. And this is also where a security event and an incident management system or a SIM comes in. Using something like that, that will basically parse logs and look for alerts and alert you to any kind of malicious activity, whether they be behavioral or whatever, like you wanna make sure that you're staying on top of that and you are responding pretty quickly. Now we've talked about just an absolute ton of information. So if you're curious about what exactly a SIM is, watch the top video. We talked a little bit about password security, so watch the bottom video if that's something that you're looking for more information on as well. Also, be sure to hit that like button because that protects you from the OWASP top 10. That may not exactly be true, but hey, give it a shot. Hit the like button and let's find out. Have a good one.